To be completely honest, the idea of the American cowboy never really left an imprint on my mind until recently. It was my junior year of high school, and I had begun to express an interest in film. Being a teenager in the age of information, I began to scour the internet for movies worth the watch, cult classics and the like. I eventually stumbled across Brokeback Mountain, a 2005 film starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Heath Ledger that follows the relationship between two sheep herders cultivated during their time on Brokeback Mountain, hence the film's title. The story had 16-year-old me in shambles, and the impact that it had on me has lasted throughout the years. This film prompted me to investigate its cultural source material. How did animal herding arrive in the United States? What did it look like? Who were the individuals who pioneered this era of American mythology? This video essay will be separated into three sections. A recounting of historical source material, the ideas applied to these stories when being translated into media, and how these icons have impacted pop culture and the international perspective of America. Historical figures. The term cowboy was first used as an insult to Tories raiding Whig cattle during the American Revolution. Despite this, cattle handling and horse riding techniques originated in the Eastern Hemisphere, namely Ireland, Spain, and North Africa. The American cowboy began as the Spanish vaquero. As Spain began to colonize the Americas in the 15th century, they hired vaqueros to manage the ranches they established during settlement. Spanish colonizers hired black, mixed, Spanish, and indigenous individuals to work on these ranches and care for their animals, in groups called droves, especially as the demand for beef increased over the 16th and 17th centuries. Such a diverse workforce led to the cultural synthesis of these workers, allowing the cowboy to take on a culture of his own. As a matter of fact, there is an extensive history between slavery and the cattle herding profession. In the mid-19th century, 62% of all Texan taxpayers in the coastal prairies region with over 100 cattle owned enslaved laborers. Furthermore, 80% of the largest cattle ranchers in Texas relied on enslaved labor in 1845. Many black cowboys in the 19th century were born into slavery, managing cattle and horses. After the Civil War, many of these previously enslaved cattle handlers remained in the profession due to lack of other opportunity in education. In 1860, the cattle drives began. This was a period of high rates of cattle handling and herding due to the United States' increasing demand for beef. And Texas just so happened to have a surplus of longhorn cattle. Cowboys would traverse trails, often on or surpassing borders set by U.S. treaties with indigenous peoples. When paired with the wild setting of the western frontier, such a task was not for the faint of heart. Eventually, these trails began to cease operation, often due to railroad expansion. This left cowboys obsolete, as trains provided a faster alternative to old-fashioned herding. In addition, the invention of barbed wire in 1868 kept cattle stationary, making long-distance herding an occupation of the past. The defining features of cowboys that made them so recognizable could be directly tied to their profession. Horses, and by extension saddles, were both practical tools and symbols of pride. Cowboys would tame wild mustangs as a rite of passage, and a cowboy cannot comfortably execute daily duties without a leather saddle upon their steed. Another cowboy staple, although often overlooked, was the rope. According to Albert Lolo Trevino, a vaquero on a Spanish king ranch, a cowboy without a rope is like a man without arms. Ropes were extremely labor-intensive to create and were often handmade as a source of pride and joy. Other defining features of cowboys included sombreros, bandanas, and chaps, all to protect the handlers from the harsh environment of the prairies. Translation to Media Despite the profession falling into an antiquated way of life, ideas prevalent in the American mindset were imbued into their tales, creating scenarios and characters larger than life which also encapsulated these exalted ideals. Rousseau's concept of the natural man, 
and by extension, President Jackson's favorite yeoman, romanticized rural life and the hard work that comes with living off of the land. Previously to cowboys, hunters were the object of such affections. Both professions required certain hallmark tools, and those within it tended to adhere to a certain style of dress. The tales of both of these laborers detailing outdoors activities and being independent. With songs detailing concepts such as elbow room and not fencing me in, sayings attributed to hunters and cowboys respectively, supported westward expansion while furthering the independence cowboys and media demonstrated. These concepts, however, were popularized by the 1950s, over two decades after the death of true cattle handling culture. This timeline provides insight on the disparities between the representations of cowboys and popular culture and their historical counterparts, specifically the lone cowboy trope, as we've already mentioned cattle handling as a group effort. Another perception of the, cow of the American cowboy that catapulted his lifestyle to the center of American mythology was his perceived masculinity. A man living off of the land, doing the work that must be done, no matter how difficult it was, and only abiding by his will, all while showing dominance over nature's forces, perfectly encapsulated patriarchal ideals. The idealization of the profession, along with manifest destiny, was also closely tied to anti-indigenous attitudes held by the Americans of the time. These tales villainize indigenous Americans despite their involvement in the creation of the cowboys they held so dear, going as far as exalting the fact cowboys often had to travel past the U.S. border and work on land assigned to indigenous peoples without welcome. Furthermore, the active exclusion of other racial minorities in conjunction with the aforementioned quote-unquote American ideals resulted in Western media perpetuating a white nationalist mindset through seemingly fictional and harmless tales. Philip Durham, professor of American literature at UCLA and author, stated that whiteness had been equated to hard drinking, hard fighting, and being fearless, fair and square, all attributes which can be said about cattle handlers of any race. Media had whitewashed the profession, culture, and way of life in ways that would last decades into the future. The culmination of all of these public opinions and ideologies propelled the concept of the cowboy much, much farther than the coastal prairies of Texas where it began. The Cowboy Caricature Evidently, the ideas surrounding and propelling cowboys into popular culture succeeded in establishing the western frontier in the public psyche. Established in 1965, a group of artists created the Cowboy Artists of America, or CAA. Thousands of pieces have been attributed to this organization, with them all detailing some aspect of cattle handling life. Notably, painter Henry Farney released his painting, Morning of a New Day, in 1907, depicting an indigenous tribe, cold in sorrow, looking across a mountainous winter landscape to a train passing by. As a gift to the president of Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, the work was meant to convey the idea that the American landscape is harsh and unforgiving, and how the only people properly equipped to tame it are Americans. This further exemplifies concepts of westward expansion and white nationalism imbued in the public perception of cowboys at the time. Along with art, cowboy idealization spread to literature. Prentice Ingram, a 19th century novelist, released countless Western-themed novels detailing the wiles and adventures of Buffalo Bill, a genuine Western laborer who connected with Ingram after some time in Europe, who was spun into a caricature for an extensive and popular line of dime novels. This idolization went as far as the White House, with President Theodore Roosevelt mentioning cowboys in his 1888 work Ranch Life in the Hunting Trail in which he describes cowboys as the grim pioneer of our race, who prepares the way for the civilization from before, whose face he must disappear. Hard and dangerous though this is, it has a wild attraction that strongly draws. This infatuation with the rugged workers of the wild, wild west reached far beyond U.S. borders. American GIs during World War II were expected to shoot from the hip, 
prefer fighting on horseback, and neglect proper posture drills by enemy forces. In the 1960s, this global infatuation spread to film. Italian-style westerns, otherwise known as spaghetti westerns, were produced by Italian filmmakers and characterized by low budgets, non-traditional music scores, violence, large open landscapes, and obviously, cowboys. These films subverted the black and white morality of past Western media, with the protagonist often adopting the label of anti-hero. Arguably, the most popular Italian-style Western of the time was A Fist Full of Dollars, a 1964 film directed by Sergio Leone and starring Clint Eastwood during his early years in filmmaking. The movement began to fade in the 1970s, the films adopting a more lighthearted and comedic tone. The Italian-style Western era inspired a multitude of subgenres, cult favorite films, and world-renowned creatives today. Despite the movement's passing, its legacy lives on in its theatrical offshoots, most notably director Quentin Tarantino, who has taken inspiration from the defining features of Italian Westerns and applied them to his own films, either intentionally or unintentionally, combining these characterizations with characters that are more representative of their 19th century counterparts than ever. Django Unchained, a 2012 Tarantino production, embraces the sharp shooting, revenge seeking, open landscaped hallmarks of the Italian style Western, all while having a black protagonist and acknowledging slavery during the time period, which is a facet of society largely ignored in Western centered media. More recently, a Netflix film titled The Power of the Dog released in 2021, subverts traditional ideals of masculinity, utilizing Western tropes to comment upon sexuality, more specifically how perceived and toxic masculinity provides a shield between man and social judgment. The ideas that Western genre was built upon are still present today, but changing in the eyes of the public and popular culture. The utilization of Western settings and tropes in modern media, whether they be subverted or commented upon, are proved to remain prevalent and the myth of the American cowboy seems as if it's here to stay, on the forefront of public attitude, artistic expression, and social commentary. Thank you to all of the wonderful sources which made this project possible, and thank you for staying till the very end. Have a good one!